you know, if you're looking for a solution to being on insurance panels and the whole insurance credentialing piece of private practice, the solution is simple. It's practice solutions. I would invite you to go over and check out practice solutions because they are the mental health billing and credentialing experts. They provide support all the way through that process and will help you not only with your insurance billing and credentialing, but they'll check benefits and do all of that stuff that needs to be done on the back end in order to do in order to accept insurance in your practice. And so they're also very reasonably priced. So go over and check out Practice Solutions, and you can do that by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash practice solutions and check out Practice Solutions today. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. This is session number 54 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer, and so glad you've joined me here, and I'm so glad you're listening to the podcast. If this is the first time to listen in, welcome, and I'm so glad you found us and so glad you've started listening. And if, if you've been listening for a while, welcome back. I'm glad you're listening, and I hope wherever you might be listening, if you'll subscribe to the podcast and and just let us know that you like it. I hope, uh, as I always say, I I hope that this information is helpful and that you'll find it useful in your journey in private practice. You know, um, I'm getting ready as I'm recording this, I'm getting ready to leave on vacation and I'm really kind of, uh, quite honestly, a little distracted with thinking about getting ready to go on, on that vacation. Finally going to take a real vacation and my wife and I are headed down to the Outer Banks of North Carolina uh, to a little island called Ocracoke Island. And for those of you that don't know about that, check it out online. Um, fortunately, the folks there weren't hit too hard with Florence when it came through. I'm still, you know, just keep the folks in there in eastern North Carolina, particularly down in the southeastern part of North Carolina where the floods were. Uh, I still keep them in my thoughts and prayers and you know, just think about all of that. So, but we'll be driving through that part of the country here in a few days. And, um, I'm looking forward to just kind of unplugging for a while. Um, as hard as that sounds for most of us. And I would encourage you to do that every now and then is just get yourself unplugged, not look at your email, not do a whole lot of stuff online. I think I'm going to be able to do that. I'll probably cheat and look at the email every now and then, but Anyway, it's going to be vacation time, and that's so important in keeping ourselves healthy and um, just on track with our practices. You know, as you've heard from me before, a lot of times private practice can be a lonely place, and one of the things that's an important thing is to connect with others and also take that time off and take that rest. And, you know, a big part of being able to do that is making sure that you're um, practice, you've got things set up financially for that. In last week's podcast with uh, Billy Robinson, we talked a little bit about that, about the importance of, you know, creating that financial buffer for yourself so that you you can take that time off and take vacation time. Because as you know, in private practice, you really don't get a paid vacation. It's something you have to build in for yourself. So, um, fortunately, I've been able to do that and thought about that over the years that I've been in private practice. So when I take off and go out of town next week, things will keep running and keep going. So it's, um, you know, that's kind of a good thing to know. So um, one of the things that I've been uh, mentioning, I mentioned in the last podcast, is speaking of finances, is I'm putting together a financial management course or finance course for specifically for therapists and counselors and social workers, psychologists. 
and really just focusing in on the financial side of private practice about how to manage your money, how to be prepared for taxes, be um, knowing how to set your prices, knowing how to be profitable, all of those things, because it's been something that's been on my mind, and I know that it's uh, something that is needed by folks. But what I'd like to invite you to do is go over to the website at practiceoftherapy.com slash finance course, and there's I've got a survey there, and I promise that it's not a long survey. I don't like long surveys. So it's a very short survey. I think there's maybe at the most maybe six questions on there. But just asking people about um, what their needs are, what they'd like to learn about. And that'll help me out a lot. Also, it's an anonymous uh, a survey, so I'm not going to ask for your name or email or anything with that particular survey, but it'll give me a whole lot of information and feedback if you'll go over and, and take a look at that. Um, and that, and I plan on getting this course out sometime, hopefully by December. I'm really pulling a lot of expertise in, talking to other therapists, uh, you know, drawn on supports like, um, well, like my guest last week, Billy Robinson, who's a certified public accountant and CPA, and then Casey Compton, who's been on the podcast here before, and just several other people out there that have successful practices and learning from them and just being able to share that information and put it into a format that's kind of a, that's a course and will help you learn some steps you can take to manage your finances better and to be able to be profitable and live the lifestyle you want to live. So uh, take a look at that survey. I would greatly appreciate it and 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 participate in it. So anyway, enough about that. So um, today's guest is another friend of mine that through, uh, you know, I think we met through Joe Sanok. I tend to meet a lot people through Joe. <laughs> uh, but Katie Englert has started another venture within this private practice space, and it's called Practicat. And Practicat is a platform where she, you can access products, information, things from all across this whole private practice space. You know, one of the things about this whole space that we're in, or that I'm in rather, uh, with this whole private practice consulting space, is there's a lot of us in there. And the good news is, is that we all tend to be very collaborative in what we do. And um, we all have different areas of expertise, different niches of things that we're doing. But Katie um, was running into this when she started trying to pull together resources for herself in her own practice. Katie's got a, a fairly large uh, private practice in, in Kentucky. And um, I think she, if I remember correctly, she said she has like eight clinicians working with her. So to me, that's a large practice or, or getting up there to a, a large size practice. And um, she is going to share with us just kind of her private practice journey and also just kind of how she came up with this whole concept of this platform called Practicat. And um, so I invite you to, to take a listen now to Katie Englert. Well, hello, folks. Uh, this is Gordon from the Practice of Therapy, and I'm so happy to have uh, with me today Katie Englert. And Katie is another uh, therapist in private practice. And Katie, tell us about you. I'm so glad to have you and so glad you agreed to be on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Gordon. Um, like Gordon said, my name is Katie Engler, and I have a group practice. I'm a therapist in Western Kentucky, and I'm also a co-founder of Practicat.com. Wow. Wow. So tell us a little bit about your practice, private practice journey, and just kind of how you've landed where you are. Sure. Um, once I graduated from grad school, uh, I worked in community mental health for a very short amount of time, which was a large agency in my area. And then I did some work for an in-home program that helped children stay in the home as long as they can, as long as it was safe mm -hmm. and healthy, so they did not have to go to foster care or to detention center or anything like that. So right. worked in that setting going in. 
you know. Very, and, yeah, that's very similar to me. That was the same type of uh, organization I work for. I'll ask you after we record which one it was. <laughs> My hunch is, is it's the same one. It could have been. It could have been. <laughs> but you learn a lot when you go into people's homes, and that's yeah. how you start learning how to be a therapist. You know, you learn right. a lot, a lot right. of what goes on outside uh-huh. of your office. Right, right. Which is so, so important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So, yeah. So when did you make that transition into private practice? I mean, how long did you work in the agency and, and that sort of thing? Sure. So I worked in the agency altogether about four or five years. Wow. Yeah. And I worked my way up through management. So I think that's a, that might be common for some people who venture out into private practice, but that was my case for sure. So I had, I had done some in-home therapy and then I was promoted to um, just a local manager of mm-hmm. managing the therapist, which is always fun. And right, right. we did that. And then, yeah. And then I had a child and said, I'm going to go for it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that like? It was intense. You know, I think you just get to your whatever point you're supposed to get to. And everybody's journey is a little bit different on how they decide on private practice. But for me, it it had gotten to the point that I was not doing what I felt like my purpose was anymore. And mm-hmm. I needed to do that. So I had two young children. And I was like, at the point where I was like, I've got to do what I'm supposed to be doing. And we're going to go for it. All right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's true for a lot of folks is that you really kind of get, you know, I, I'm glad that there are people out there that um, are working in agencies. I did it for about nine years myself. And uh, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, get to a place where it just is no longer a fit for them. And really being out on your own is a much better fit. And I think that's uh, your your uh, what again, a theme people hear from me a lot is, you know, is the asking your why, why you want to do it. And I think, uh, like you said, your purpose changed. Right. And I, and I think that that it's such important work on every level. So, so I believe I'm in in total agreement with you on that. The agency work is important and the different programs that are offered to Mm -hmm. communities in, in all the different areas, whether it's urban or rural, those are important. But as my priorities changed, I, I knew that my purpose had gotten a little bit off track. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So you, you made the transition into private practice. Did you just start as a solo practitioner? I sure did. So uh-huh. I just went around and asked local doctors who had some space Yeah. available. <laughs> yeah. And that's a great way to start. Yeah. And so was that a, um, was that a difficult process for you? Actually, it wasn't too difficult. I had to put myself out there and ask ask people who had some, from my perspective, some power and um, and space because I needed the space. And, and one one doctor in town said, "Sure, I have this closet space. It's a big closet, but mm-hmm. I think that would fit into your budget." And I said, "Okay." And so. Mm-hmm. I rented her closet as my office, and then she let me see clients by the hour in one of her exam rooms. So I paid her every time I saw a client to to pretty much bum an exam room while oh, I was wow. <laughs> while I was starting out, and that didn't last yeah. very long. But that's yeah. how it started. Right, right. Seems like I, I seems like I did something similar to that. I had a. a a friend who was a nurse practitioner and she had a fairly large health center here. And that's what they did is they they kind of stuck me in the back in the storage closet. And, you know, I I figured, and I bought, you know, some cheap furniture to put in there and, and I figured out pretty quickly that was not going to work. (laughs) Funny story was, uh, and I don't mean to get off on a tangent here, but it reminded me of it. It just, uh, I had, uh, was getting ready to see a client and was get trying to talk with a client and there was an exam room right next door to us and the poor man that was in the exam room was hard of hearing so they were kind of yelling at him to get him to hear what they were saying and so all of that was just intruding into the session and so it just yeah didn't work very well (laughs) 
I love hearing those stories, you know, of, of how, how, because it's funny when you look back on it at the time, it's really serious and you're trying to, you're trying to save your pennies and you're trying to not overextend yourself and, and people tell you this, but you kind of look back yeah, and you're like, that was, that was sweet. (laughs) Like that was a precious, sweet time. So I think, I, I think I stuck it out a month there at that place. (laughs) Or I found another place. So, wow. Um, so, yeah, so you you jumped into solo private practice and then and now you've got a group practice. So, what was that process like? It was it was pretty natural. Uh, you know, when I started doing it, I, I I had to search a lot for support and for um for things that I needed. So, I didn't have a business degree. I did not I had never started a health practice before. So you, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that you have to learn and some things you can, you know, get from others and mentors in the field. And now there's a lot of podcasts you can listen to, uh, Mm -hmm. but there, you know, that help that was very helpful because it's lonely when you start a private practice. So gathering that kind of stuff up and then making some mistakes. So I just started getting connected to other therapists and I really wanted to work with people who I respected and who were excellent therapists. And so I wanted people that I had a good connection with that, that I could vibe well with, that there wouldn't be personality challenges or anything like that. So I just started slowly adding one therapist at a time until we took off. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how big is your group now? So right now I have a group practice in Western Kentucky Mm -hmm. and we have eight therapists Wow. Here, including myself. Yeah. And then I have another location um, that I do some consulting for that's also a compass counseling in in Owensboro, Kentucky. So not too far away. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that was a pretty big step, but it sounds like you're you're fairly typical in that you learned a lot of stuff the hard way. Uh, along the way, and oh yeah, and, uh, and here here you are. Yeah, you come out on the other side, don't you? Yeah, you do. You do <laughs> one way or another. One uh, way or another. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, I know one of the things that's exciting that you're doing now is that you've really kind of uh, jumped into kind of the the consulting resource space for therapists, and um, and you've started a new venture called Practicat. So, tell us about that and. How you that I love that name by the way. It's just uh, having had uh, been a cat, been a cat owner. We don't have any right now, but uh, most of our pets along the way have been cats. Yeah, it's a it's a fun name, uh, uh-huh. and I'm a University of Kentucky girl. So oh yeah, so okay. there's that too. I'm uh-huh. sorry for anyone who's not a fan, but uh-huh. um, but it is a fun name, and it really the whole purpose of Practicat was born out of that struggle of starting a private practice and really not knowing the business side Mm -hmm. and and learning those things and, and how many hours over years that I spent figuring that out and learning and gathering and reviewing and testing and making mistakes and just Mm -hmm. valuable time, just, just on that one thing. Mm -hmm. And so a couple years ago, I just had, I, I just was like, I'm done searching for things all over creation. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I want to solve this. So I right. went from, so we, I had the idea, we need to have a one-stop shop for people who are in private practice to get what they need to practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and so, so I contacted my business partner, Jared, and I said, I've had this wild idea. It's kind of big what do you think? And thought he might talk me out of it. And he said, I think it's an awesome idea. So we just started developing and, Mm -hmm. and now we're ready to, to share it with therapists and make it for therapists. So we want the, we want feedback. We want people to visit, tell us and tell us what they think. Right. Right. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about the platform and how it works and um, what people can, what, what sort of resources people can begin to find there. Yeah, so it's a pretty easy system or platform to use. You go on and and you can shop and there are different some different categories. We have some featured 
products already. You can buy all types of a variety of things. And we're, we're adding daily at this point, we're adding products. Um, so you can get um, intake forms, forms for your business, um, tracking spreadsheets that are already f- formulated and formatted to help you figure out a variety of things that you might need for your practice. Um, there are letters that are pre-made that you can edit um, for your own use, put your logo on those, checklists and presentations, um, bundles of, of paperwork and intake packets um, from people who are very successful and experienced in the field mm-hmm. to where you can edit those things for yourself and for your practice. Um, lots of um, tools for the administrative side of the business too. Um, hiring tools, agreement templates, tools to help with credentialing, if that's a choice that you want to make. So we mm-hmm. have a pretty big variety uh, um, getting started here. And we're, like I said, we're adding things every day. And I get messages from therapists pretty regularly about, hey, can you, could you find something like this to put on the site? And it's just been exciting to talk to people about what their purpose is and collect uh-huh. and, and put yeah. that in one place. So um, yeah. that's probably been the most exciting thing is all the awesome things therapists are doing already. Right, right. As you've done this, this might be a very broad question, but as you've done this, um, what are you noticing that people uh, are looking for the most um, when they come to your site? Where do they, I guess, where do they struggle or where do people have the most questions? I feel like so far, <laughs> I feel like so far the majority um, of of the information, the products that people are looking for are uh, marketing items. Uh, people are looking for the administrative forms, those types of things. Um, the presentations I feel like are really valuable and I can't wait to grow that. In practice, um, hiring tools is another one, um, mm-hmm. how to interview contracts. And we don't do any legal advice. So all of the materials in this is in our, you know, agreement, our purchase agreement. But it is nice, you know, as you probably know, it's nice to take something, a template to an attorney and let them finalize it. Right, right. Yeah. It can be be very valuable. Right, right. When, when you say... Um, you mentioned having some um, presentations. Tell what did you, what do you mean by that? So one of our vendors has some PowerPoint presentations that are pre-made with some slides and handouts. For the the two that I'm thinking that are coming to mind right now are um, about self harm and forgiveness. And so mm-hmm. they're pre-packaged presentations that you can customize and present somewhere in your community oh, wow. or or somewhere locally, um, Mm -hmm. they have gathered all the information for you to where you can go and present that um, if that's, you know, in your scope of practice. Right, right. Yeah, I love that idea because I know one of the things that I, you know, whenever I do create something new, I always check to see what else is out there first. And I think uh, one of the things that is um, learning is that, I'm learning is, is that you, obviously you don't want to plagiarize anything, but you, to be able to take, look at somebody else's idea and then be able to kind of do your spin on it uh, is always a a fun thing to do for me, at least. It definitely is. And I, and I think you think about how much time you spend and is invested. And if you put together a 45 minute to an hour presentation, Mm -hmm. how much time that you invest just compiling those things and making it look nice and presentable. Mm-hmm. And if you can go and just still put your own spin on it, but but the nuts and bolts of that are already done. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's a, uh, you know, one of the, you know, I, it's funny because I've, um, I've just recently hired a new uh, virtual assistant that, that's going to be helping me with my podcast production. And, um, one of the things that I'm putting together is just kind of my instructions on how to do that. And uh, everybody does it a little bit differently. But once you create a template for something, um, 
you know, it can be replicated very easily ongoing. And uh, I think it's always a good idea to pull from other people's templates. I know um, I've got a paperwork packet as well. Um, and I know that that's one of the more popular things that I, that people will, um, will seek out is just our, you know, having that stuff to do as a, a template. And, you know, I did all of mine from scratch. I wish I'd had more templates back when I first started it. But um, yeah, I went through that, that whole process. Me too, Gordon. And that's part of the, of the, my drive for Practica is that I feel like we're getting distracted from our purpose as a profession. Sometimes when we head into private practice, I feel like we regain that, but we're taking so much time recreating the wheel and mm-hmm. if we could connect and share, I just think, wow, we could really chase our purpose and we could also get profitable a lot quicker. Right, right. Yeah, it's a, you know, what sounds like one of the things that you've been able to do pretty well, Katie, is um, learning how to um, do less bootstrapping. I know one of the things that I've already, I've struggled with as in my own growth is learning how to hand things off and learning how to, uh, you know, really kind of replicate processes that I do every day. You want to talk a little bit about that and what you've learned? uh, And I'm sure you're doing a lot of that with with the size practice that you have, is that you're doing things, uh, you're delegating more stuff. Yes. And I think, you know, that's a skill that for me, I had to learn because if you're if you're one to start things and create things, sometimes that's hard to hand mm-hmm. off. Um, but you get to a place of growth and then you have a, then you're in a place of responsibility, you know, of, okay, this is, this is my skill set and what I'm, what, what I'm good at. And, and these are the things that I'm not good at. So how do I, you know, find some support in those areas? And it's still a little bit tricky for me sometimes to delegate. Right, right, right. It, But I think you have to figure that out. And I use, I will use all types of things to help me with systems because I'm not typically the most detail oriented person. I am an idea person. And so I can help people pick out ideas and products that they already have in a snap. But, you know, coming up with the details of how we're going to implement this process in the practice, there's other people that I work with that are excellent at that. And it's second nature for them. Right. So figuring out those strengths of your team is so important. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's something that we don't really talk about that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but the quicker you do that and you capture your systems, it makes things a lot easier. Right. Right. What, uh, what have you found helpful in doing that in terms of capturing your systems and coming up with those processes? There's several things. Um, and, and I know that you're the Google expert in private practice, right? Mm-hmm. You're the you're the Google guy. Well, so. I did, did some people think I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I think having a shared drive to use operational things in with a team as it grows is so important. Um, I use uh, video capturing tools to screen mm-hmm. to screen capture things that I do. Um, I've always been a big reader of business books since I started private practice. Mm -hmm. So I've read several different business type books right now. I'm finishing. I think everyone in our field is finishing clockwork. It's amazing. Right. 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 And so, um, it is a good, it's a good one. And so figuring out how to delegate and how to all the moving parts of the wheel and how to make the wheel roll, right? right? So you're trying to figure out, okay, let's get it organized and then let's let it, let's let it go. Yeah. Um, and so those are things that are really helpful for me. I also um, am just now, we finished it this week, um, some strengths-based assessments for my team mm-hmm. and how how to delegate smarter. So I don't want to go to someone who is, you know, innovative and ask them to do something repetitive and detail-oriented because... Right it's going to be a struggle for them and it's going to be a struggle for me to enforce as a group practice owner. So really I want to be able to delegate smarter also. Right. right. Yeah. And that's uh, you know, that's something that's been uh, uh, kind of a theme for me here lately. I know that you and I have, uh, have our mutual friend Casey Compton, who is, 
and she is the system and process guru uh, that that's kind of part of this community that we're in. Um, and, um, you know, I'm learning more and more about that. And it's been just kind of a fascinating thing for me. Uh, I'm not learning how to delegate better, learning how to put things in place so that it's, you know, I'm not wasting all of my time on stuff that really is not my, um, I guess my forte. I'm uh, like, like you mentioned, Katie, at the beginning is that, you know, I'm not a naturally organized person. And so I have to put a lot of energy into that. And I think um, I'm learning more and more about how to do that better. Yeah, and finding that support. You know, Casey is on another level than pretty much anyone I've ever met. Right. From therapist to therapist, as far as she can see, you know, <laughs> the processes, the processes for her come so naturally. And mm-hmm. she's just a rock star at that. But Aside from that, I think figuring those things out and where you need the support because you can't be all things, right? So you have to figure out, okay, so I'm not excellent at organization. So let's find somebody who can help me or or something that's already done, a process that's already figured out, and let's implement it. Yeah, and I think uh, that's what I, I think I like uh, what what really drew me to your idea with Practicat is is having that one stop kind of place to where you can can kind of find all those resources. Right. We're really wanting for the search to be over. You know, we want the searching Uh in all the places we want, you know, that's our goal. Our our goal is to be the one-stop shop for therapists in private practice. Right. Great. Great. So as you, um, have you, as you've been through this journey, what are some of the big things that you've learned? Ooh. How's that for a question? Yeah. You're not messing around, Gordon. (laughs) Um, I think some of the biggest things that I've learned are my identity as an individual has really shaped up through this process. Um, I think you just are, when you're going on a journey for something totally new and you're throwing it out there, it's, you have to be vulnerable. It's a little scary. Right. I think, I think it's just another step in, in learning more about myself has been a big has been a big lesson for me um, because I'm sure most therapists think, oh, I'm so self-aware, right? So, right, right. <laughs> and I think we are, uh, but you can always learn more about who you are. Mm-hmm. And so that has been fun, you know, getting to know other sides of that. Um, I also think, you know, learning and having to stretch on things and, mm-hmm. and pacing myself with other people has been, has been good. Uh, Because I have been a group practice owner for the past, you know, almost six years. And when you're spearheading something like that on your own, you can go at whatever pace is comfortable for you. But when you're working on a big idea, you know, we say that all the time. Uh When you're working on a big idea, you can't, it can't be just you. It has to be, it has to be more than one person. And it has to be working for different people's pace. Yeah. To be to get to get going. Right, right. I did, I, I know one of the things that yeah that uh, again it's a theme I'm seeing is just what it means to be team, do team building and bringing people together. I just got a book. I'm trying to remember the title of it. I've got it in my backpack here. Hang on one second. Let me pull it out. Oh yeah, and it might have been you that it uh, talked about this. Was it? Was it you that mentioned this book, People Processes? No, that wasn't me, but I would love to know more about it. Yeah, so it's just uh, the sub subtitle is How Your People Can Be Your Organization's Competitive Advantage. And it's by um, Rami Alajil. I think I'm per- I'll put be sure and put it in the show notes. But yeah, I just got this yesterday. And so I'm looking forward to delving in it, into it. And it's kind of... Uh, about what you do around unmotivated employees, poor performance, and high turnover. Um, so it sounds like, you know, along that same lines of really just understanding processes and systems as you grow. Um, and even, I would say, even for the solo practitioner, um, pay attention to your processes of how you're doing things in your business. I mean, you, what, one of the things that will help you a lot is having a a smooth intake process and having a way that you do that. Um, you know, like I, I can remember early on, one of the things that I did is um, that helped me is 
uh, back back in the day before I had a uh, we had a an assistant here at my practice. I was always having to return the phone calls to people that were inquiring about things, which just which just ate up a whole lot of time. Uh, but what I did was put together a, an email template that was just a standard template, but it always get the client's uh, email address, and I would email them the paperwork their paperwork and forms ahead of time so that when they came in, we didn't have to um, wait for them to fill out forms and that sort of thing. So um, now again, that's just a different way of doing it maybe than a lot of places. So Right, because all therapists in private practice aren't in a group practice. And some of the best therapists that I know and a couple of my mentors have always been in solo practice. So I think having a place to connect is even more important in that case sometimes is to have a place to go to, to get some information quickly. And, and like right. you said, to, to put your process in play, regardless of what your practice looks like. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So at the, we're, we're thinking alike on a lot of this stuff and it's, uh, it's great to, you know, one of the things that I always tell people like you've already said, Katie is, is reach out to others. And I know that's one of the things that really helped you grow your practice was reaching out to others and getting that help and uh, getting mentoring from people and maybe some coaching along the way, even if it's somebody outside our, our business, you know, I know one of the things I did uh, about four or five years ago as I went and I had, there's a, a person that I knew here in my community who was a, who was a business coach, small business coach. And I went and spent some time with her and that just um, did a lot to really kind of get some clarity about the direction I wanted, wanted to go. Of course it changes. I, <laughs> yeah. All the time. I did the same thing, Gordon, about a year ago. And, and those kind of things are, you know, they, that can turn out kind of scary too, you know, or yeah. getting the facts. Sometimes we want to be, you know, we keep ourselves comfortable not knowing the facts about our business. And, right, right. <laughs> and that's, you know, when you start to dig for that truth about your business, it can be, a, right. it can also be really scary, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, the, that's another thing too, that, uh, um, and I know you and I are going to talk a little bit about this after we get done with this is just about um, me being able to get kind of some of the things that I'm doing on, on with you there at Practicat, but um, um, one of the one whole thing is this whole financial side of private practice that I'm really realizing that a lot of people struggle in that area, and that they um, they don't know how to manage their their finance as well. It was not something that I knew how to do well, and I had to learn it. And so, I'm putting together this uh, this financial management course. Uh, I've got to come up with a better name for it though. So, but I'm gonna. Um, rather than just call it financial management course. Uh, so uh, I might talk with you about that and people listening can shoot me an email. Let me know what a good name for that is. But really just understanding all of the the ins and outs of like the business side of things. And a big, big chunk of that is looking at your finances and being brave, brave enough to pull back the curtain and, and look at what what it really is. Right. And I would love to talk to you more about that, Gordon. Um, yeah. And But you, do, it, there's a lot of courage. And, you know, I've known people over the years that when they take a look at it, they're like, ouch, you know, mm-hmm. I, have, I have some big changes to make. And, yeah. and even more reason to connect with other people in our field to say, oh, you've been here and done this. How do I, how do I get, how do I walk through this? How do I, right. how, if, if my goal is to stay in, how do I walk through this? and get the resources and information and connections that I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, because when you learn those things about your business, you're going to be distracted from your purpose. Right. There's no getting around it. So how do we get back on track for purpose after a distraction? Yeah, I I totally agree. Well, Katie, I want to be uh, mindful of your time. Um, Tell folks how they can get in touch with you and find out more about Practicat and uh, all the great stuff that you're doing. Yeah, we want everybody to visit the website, which is www.practicat.com. And I'm sure that there will be a link in the in the notes. Yes. Um, you can also send us messages or Facebook messages or emails about any kind of feedback or product that you would like to see on the site because we want to be really therapist driven. 
Yes, yes. And what social medias are you on with Practicat? Right now we're on Facebook. We're getting ready to branch out into a couple other ones. Um, mm-hmm. So right now Facebook is is, is the one for us. Uh, okay, okay. So I'll, uh, I'll get links for that as well in the show notes. Well, Katie, I'm so glad that you uh, joined me for the podcast today. This has been fun and look forward to uh, hearing more about your, your journey here in the future. Same, Gordon. It was, it's been a pleasure and thanks for making me feel comfortable and welcomed and letting me share Practicat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. You know, it's interesting how after talking to Katie and thinking about uh, the things that we initially talked about is how many folks out there um, make that transition from uh, working for an agency or working in in public mental health or, um, you know, other places. They make that transition into private practice. And the main reason that they do it is that they really are looking for the lifestyle that private practice affords us. And, you know, the good thing is nowadays, uh, didn't used to be this way, but at least now there are so many resources and so many different ways for people to get into private practice and to get started in this journey. So, um, and Katie's resources will help you out a lot with that. She's got a lot of great stuff over there. We're going to be uh, one of the things that we talked about after we re- recorded this this interview is I'm going to be setting up a a store of uh, a practice of therapy store on Practicat. So uh, being able to have another way for people to find the resources that I'm putting together and keep trying to pull out put out there. You know, one of them being the session note helper, um, which is just a system that I put together with the um, uh, using the tools of Google G Suite. And that is, um, you know, one of the things shortcuts that I found of being able to use Google Forms and Google Docs in conjunction with each other to, to quickly uh, make uh, session notes or progress notes. Uh, using a, a form that's just a bunch of check boxes that produces a narrative, and then you can you can also customize all that to to meet the wording and the requirements of your own practice. So um, anyway, so be sure to check that out on uh, it's sessionnotehelper dot com is the URL for that, and um, it's a pretty popular little. Uh, thing I put together. So the other thing that I've got out there is uh, the full course on G Suite. And some of you maybe that have been listening for a while, uh, maybe have learned about that, but it's G Suite for therapists. And um, I'm just, um, you know, one of the things that I seem to be leaning towards here lately is just um, putting out there some online courses that just seems to be something that I'm drawn into. So anyway, didn't mean to digress with that. But anyway, do go check out uh, Katie Englert's stuff over at practicat.com. And I've got to uh, put that in the show notes. And uh, so you can get in touch with Katie. And I'm so glad she was able to join me for the uh, podcast and tell about all that she's been involved in and things that she's doing. And I'm hoping that her journey is a, is of encouragement to you as well as you think about your own journey in private practice and just learning all the different ways to do what we do as clinicians and people helpers. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks again for joining me for this episode. Uh, do uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening, whether it be on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio. I think I've got them all covered there. Uh, but um, I think that I heard late here recently that Amazon um, Amazon Echo is going to be doing uh, podcasts if they're not already. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get our feed over there as well. So anyway, take care, folks. And I hope you have a great rest of your week or weekend whenever you might be listening to this. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>have been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools 
to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. If you haven't already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.